So if you're out there and you're giving your horse a nice rub and you're giving them a bit of a, or they even come up for a rub, if, if you can't just push on them and get them to go back nice and easy, then probability has a, they've got all their weight on that front end and they're pushing into your space. Even if they haven't walked into it, they're pushing into it in their mind then you don't want to reward that. So a good way to check it is if you're rubbing them on the head, can you back them up real easy? So here, see how she doesn't go backwards? So even though she's not in my space, that means that she's got her weight here on the front. She should be able to go backwards easy like that. So keep an eye on that. If you give them a big rub and you think, oh, that's nice. If it was truly nice, you should be able to just ask them to go back a little bit and they just go back a bit nice and polite. And this horse isn't doing that. So I've got to keep an eye on that with this horse. Hi, babe. Yeah, you're doing a good job. Yeah, you know, don't bite me. Just a rub. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one of those ones, you know, you give a rub on the head, you say, oh, great, I'll just invade your space. So she's got to learn that comfort isn't always on top of me. See how she hasn't moved her feet? <laughs> comfort can be out there doesn't have to come in and get the rub and the hug even though we want to give it to them all you know sometimes you're going to have to reward them out there because you can't have them in the habit of thinking every time something is scary that they've got to go towards you because you might get a big horse that jumps on top of you when it gets scared you know this horse is she's only even though she's big she's only two years old it's just a baby we got here Good thing about a baby is they've got a bit of curiosity in them. We've got to leave that in there. You want them to be asking questions. You know, that's what curiosity is all about, asking questions. If they're asking a question, see, uh, us, we're the horse's teacher. And you can't have a student unless your student has a question. <coughs> if, you, <laughs> pardon me, if you you know, communicating with your horse and he hasn't got any questions for you, you can't be teaching, all you can be doing is lecturing. And lecturing doesn't mean you're going to be listening. When you get lectured to, it doesn't mean you're going to be listening. A good teacher makes sure the student has a question first. Then, even better if they can lead them to the right answer. And that's what we're doing. We've got to keep the curiosity, the try in these horses. Being too hard on them won't do that for you. But you've got to be fair, you know, you've got to be fair. They can't just walk all over you either. I think with this one, because she'll be going, when we work with her here, she'll be going through a few emotions. Um, she might start to sweat a bit. Um, but after she works through that and learns to think her way through her emotion, um, she'll come out a braver horse on the other side. When you get a braver horse, you can do things like this. See, the, it's not so much about the float loading, it's about her trusting you enough to do things that she's afraid of. Yep. So if you're the boss, she should do whatever you ask um, because she trusts you. Same as in the herd situation. Yep. So at the moment she's not. And what will happen is as she works through that, she's probably going to get a little bit sweaty as we work through here. But once she gets through that other side and she discovers that it's okay, she gets that self-confidence that comes out of that. She'll be a braver horse, so she'll have less of those anxieties that you were talking about when you're out riding her away from other horses. But the braver she gets, the less separation anxiety she'll have. So it's in that moment in there where they jump around and start giving us opposition. Quite often it's tempting for us to back off, but we've got to keep our focus and keep focusing on the release. You know, keep, you know, don't think, oh my God, my horse is jumping up, it's getting worse. Keep focusing on the, on the release, focus on the good thing, and you'll get more of it. How you feel like you need to walk out of the way there? She's got to come out of your way. So as she was coming at you there, she was coming into your personal space. So you almost, because you're polite, almost stepped out of the way. But she's got to step out of your way. Uh, human things don't work with horses. So you might you know, be polite with people that way, but if you walk out of a horse's way all the time, they're going to start walking on you. He sort of blasted that jump. I didn't ask him to jump. But that anxiety just built up too much. Too much for him. And again.
this is thing. I've seen people, uh, you know, they've got jumping horses and they think their horses jump excellent, but all they're doing is rushing the jumps all the time. If you've got a good jumping horse, you should be able to stop them before, after, two strides after, wherever you like. If every time you line your horse up for a jump, he goes and blasts over the jump, he's not being confident. He's escaping the jump. It's not good for him long term. You know, if, if that's all we ever do is teach our horses to try and try and try, eventually they will be out. You get them to do whatever you you want, and you'll both enjoy it. I think that goes for us as well. We just got to keep trying sometimes, you know, not to back off. If we're not good at something, you know, if your timing's giving you trouble, <coughs> just keep practicing. He knows to go in there, but it, um, it's hard for him emotionally. there. It just got too much for him. Boy, this is a good place. This is a good place. I wanted to make a decision on this. He's licking his lips here at the moment. I don't want it just to get him on, I want him to get on there and to decide that this is a good place to be. You know, Shane's asked me to go on here, it's a good thing, I'm happy with that. Because when we close the gate, you want him to be happy in there. You don't want to be closing the gate on a horse who doesn't want to be in there. Because steel and horse, steel and flesh don't mix. They've got to be happy. You force a horse on here, you're running a risk of getting them hurt. You know, sometimes when you ask them to do things, it doesn't mean they're going to be happy about it. Sometimes when you ask them to do something that's good for them, you know, it doesn't mean they're always going to be happy about it. You're supposed to be the boss. So make sure that you're asking them to do things that are reasonable, but it doesn't always mean they're going to be happy about it. They'll be happy about it, you know, down the track. But sometimes if they've been doing something a certain way for a few years, they think their way's the happy way. You know, I know a few teenage boys that would like to sit on them on their computer and just stay there all the time and all the time. When mum tells them to get them off, get off there, they're, they're not real happy about it. You know, you don't want to go more than about two or three uh, try good tries in one day. Otherwise, it gets into like repetition training, and they'll start to shut off again. Even though they might do the task, they'll start to shut off a bit. So you've got to make sure that they're thinking all the way through. But if you drive on the left-hand side of the road, generally you do most of your work on this side. Drive on the right-hand side of the road, you'll be doing most of it from this side because you'll be loading the horse to the, to the high side of the road when you load him in the trailer. Okay? But it still doesn't mean that you shouldn't be practising, you know, the, from, the, from the wrong side, you know? So practising over here is a little bit more challenging. The thing is here, the direction stops as soon as you get to here, so you can't have good clear direction for as long. So get that side, the easy side working first and then get them to where you can do it on the harder side as well. It's a bit of practice as well. See how he's not going forward? Oh, he did go. That's enough. Did you release after he stepped or did you keep whacking him? Ah, oh, dear. So what we use in Quantum Savvy, <laughs> we use in Quantum Savvy a thing called release focus training, which means every time, you know, we get our horse and we suggest they go somewhere and if they do that, that's good. They, they all stay in comfort. If they don't, yes, we'll use our phases, but we're always focusing on the release. We release. Every time they try, we release, release. Every time they try. And what happens is our timing's got to get really good to do that. Now, we call it release focus training, but really, it's us that needs the training, the training of the release, the training of the timing. Okay, so that's your practice. Yeah. That's okay. He loads. We just got to get that timing sorted out.